This will be my honest opinion on the quality of creepypastas and the quality of the creepypasta community. Why am I making this? Because I I feel like I've been here long enough to the point where I can speak my mind about it. Alright, I'll just talk about the quality of stories firsthand. The quality of creepypastas varies, as you guys probably know. Uh, I'm the one who likes the writers who actually tried, for example. Things that are only good because of the OCs in them. Jeff the Killer, the Clockwork, I think. I, I didn't even bother with that one. But those are stories that, if you're a fan of the OC, that's fine, but you have to admit that they have very, 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 very terrible flaws that makes the story just not good. And if I can't enjoy the story, I can't enjoy the character, at least that's how it is for me. There are stories that have, you know, that have OCs that are actually quality. Um, can I think of any off the top of my head? There's that one Eyeless Jack backstory, where it was the backstory of how it came to an existence, you know what I mean? That was, that was really good, in my opinion. The actual Eyeless Jack story that got famous, though, I'm not really a big fan of. Really cheesy, uh, pretty stereotypical. But, all around, only, the only stories that are good are the ones that basically don't involve OCs, to be honest, because Oh, usually ones that involve OCs are just god-awful. Like, that's that's just the fact of the matter. Uh, the good stories, in my opinion, are the ones that uh, shroud in mystery and have very little evidence, but just enough to make you question yourself. Uh, a good example of this would be... Um, a lot of these have been shot down because people search the internet to prove some of these stories wrong, but... Uh, like happy.gif... Um, Slipmouth Woman, Urban Legendy, you know, mysterious stuff, you know, like stuff like that. It it creeps you out because it has that element. That's what a creepypasta is supposed to be. Because creepypastas originally were chainmail that basically said if you don't do this, a ghost will kill you, and it was that uncertainty that frightened you. So at a core, I believe that's what a creepypasta should have, and Jeff the Killer doesn't even come close to that, except for the few lines where it's like, he never got caught, he's on the loose. That is actually what a creepypasta is trying to achieve. A creepypasta isn't gonna try to scare you immediately. A creepypasta is gonna, uh, when you're laying in bed later that night, and if you're still thinking about that, then it's a good story. You know it's, it's done its job because it's not supposed to, you know, like a horror movie, it's not supposed to just kind of give you this rush and when it's over, you know, you're done. It's supposed to stick in your mind and make you think. If a creepypasta doesn't do that, then I don't believe it should be called a creepypasta. So that's just my opinion on that. And as far as the community is concerned, I'll just hop into the OC stuff. Uh, as far as narrator drama, I, I, I don't care about that, but it, it is something that's very t all too, all too real. To be honest, I, I, I avoid it the best I can. If it involves one of my friends, or something, or someone I know, uh, I'll, I'll do minimal involvement, maybe like post a comment, you know, state my opinion. Besides that, I, I steer clear of it, but it's all too prevalent because 13 year old kids think I can talk into a mic too. They join the community, they quit after like 3 or 4 months. Now granted, I, I started doing this in 8th grade, that's how long I've been doing this, and uh, I, I mean I stuck to it all around. That's what it mainly consists of, people who are like in 8th grade, who just start narrating with a terrible mic, and then they leave 3 months later, and they always cause a ruckus, and that 3 months, there is always some drama going on, and unfortunately I'm friends with Creeps work, so I either hear most of it, or I'm indirectly involved with most of it, just because I am associated with them, but onto the actual people that are fans of creepypastas, uh, brace for impact, because any criticism I'm saying to you guys who enjoy scary stories is also a criticism of myself. Why would I be doing this if I didn't like the stories, right? So, uh, creepypastas do have a pattern, and you kind of have to be... Unless it's a really, really good story, you kind of have to force yourself to fall for the same trick over and over again. Short, build up, last two second, last two sentences of the story, it's supposed to be the heavy hitting, heavy hitting words, and that's, that's the formula. And after a while, especially narrating them, you catch on to that formula, and I'm not saying I'm gonna stop narrating, but what I'm saying is, is if you've been listening to creepypastas for a while, it, you're most likely not gonna be a long-term fan, because stuff like that it, it gets stale. It definitely does get stale, unless there's like a story with a good twist. As far as narrators that cause drama, and ones that do stuff, like, it's just, just, just don't. 
but if anything, if you are doing it, at least, at least do it for the right reasons. Now, I'm not saying purposely go out and fight with someone, but I'm saying that a very good reason to, you know, start the narrator drama is it does draw in a lot of traffic. So, if you want to be the Onision of Creepypasta, that's, that's fine. But, you know, just don't go overboard. So, that's, that's my opinion on the current state of the Creepypasta community. All around, I think we're in pretty good shape, but... Because all the flaws that have been going on, and has been going on since pretty much the beginning, so it's nothing worth complaining about. And I, I think creepypastas will stick around for a very, very long time. 